Amen. You know, we don't honor God more than when we live in the victory that he actually gained for us. Amen. That's what he wants. He didn't want to pay the whole price for our victory and then us continuing to live as those in the world who have no victory. Amen. If somebody won the battle, I know uh, when, when the Americans... And, and the Canadians marched into Amsterdam. My grandparents and my, my parents told me that there was a lot of shouting and cheering going on. Come on. Because they were liberated. Come on. Before, you know, people were shot, killed. My mom was starving to death. She only had months to live. And suddenly the Americans and Canadians came marching through the streets. Now, you know. If you've been in, in captivity for five years, completely starving on the brink of death, and suddenly these, these conquerors walk through the streets, and your bondage is no more, come on, and food is being dropped from airplanes, you know you're going to live and not die, then, then you can't just give up and say, well, here, here's my victory, but I'm just going to keep living as if we're still in bondage. Amen. People were celebrating. People were getting married again. Come on. People were having families again. People were starting to dream again. That's what Jesus wants for you and I. He defeated our, your enemy. And there's a lot of enemies, but Jesus defeated your enemies. And he defeated the problem of sin that separated us from God. Come on. And he wants you to dream. He wants you to dream about your future. He wants you to have his thoughts. God says that his thoughts for each and every one of us is thoughts of a good future, a good hope, a, 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 a multitude of thoughts that are prosperous for us. Thoughts to prosper. Let's say that, thoughts to prosper. God doesn't have thoughts for you to you lose it all and to be defeated and to have horrible relationships, to be sick in your body, no. God has prosperity for your soul, for your body, for your finances, for your relationships, for your future. That's why he did it all, to restore us to newness of life. Amen. Uh, we're going to prepare our hearts for communion right now. The elements are going to come through the aisles, and you can just grab one uh, and then wait uh, uh, to take it. We're going to all take it together as one big happy family. And the Bible says that uh, Jesus said, do this as often as you remember. You got to remember what I did for you. Okay, so we're doing this um, as a remembrance of what Jesus has already done. We're living from victory. Your victory is already in your past. Come on. Jesus already did it 2,000 years ago. He already won victory. So these elements, there's... A little uh, top layer there that you can peel off and that will be the waiver we'll take the waiver out in a little bit then there's another layer you can peel off and that's for for the juice okay so I want to read a scripture that really tells the whole gospel story and if you're ever confused about what the good news is that's the word gospel then then read Isaiah 53 and it says in verse 3 that Jesus was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with the deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. And it was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our redemption. Come on, uh, for our rebellion. And he was crushed for our sins. It's your sins and my sins that caused Jesus to say, I'll, I'll, I'll take the punishment. Have you ever taken a punishment for someone else? I remember my husband teaching my boys one time that. And he said, you know, I'll take the spanking instead of you. Come on, how nice is that? And, but you know, my boys were like, no, we don't want you to do that. <laughs> But, but you know, that's what Jesus did. He took our punishment, your punishment that you and I deserve for our rebellion. Come on. For, for, for all, all of our sins. 
And so it says he was fierce for our rebellion and crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be whole. Come on. Now there's a cause and effect. He was beaten, not just to be beaten, but so you could be whole. Whole in your mind. Come on. Whole in your thoughts, in your emotions. Whole in your physical body. Whole in every area of your life. Completely free from sin. And he was whipped so we could be healed. The Bible says don't forget any of these benefits. Live in them. Take them. How do I take them? You say, I believe that you did this and I receive it. Amen. The Bible says that we activate these things by our confession, by our confession of faith. So he was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants and that his life was cut short in midstream. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had done no wrong and had never deceived anyone. But he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. But it was the Lord's good plan. It was a plan all along. God's sneaky plan. Come on, the devil thought he had one on Jesus, but it was the Father's plan all along. It was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. I wonder who those people are. Hey, that's me and that's you. He will enjoy a long life and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. When he sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, my righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous. For he will bear all their sins. Come on. He will bear all their sins. Today, I want to tell you that, that Jesus bore all your sins. Every single one. Secret ones, public ones, all of them previous ones present ones and he wants you to live in the benefit of the freedom that Jesus paid the price I'm gonna pray over you as we take this waiver let's take the waiver and Jesus says that this represents his body that was broken for you and for me so that we could be whole again so when we take this by faith we're gonna say Jesus I receive my wholeness and I'm going to pray over our minds. I'm going to pray over our hearts. There's a spirit uh, in the world, the spirit of this age, the Bible calls it, that wants uh, uh, aggression, anger, hatred, confusion, depression, heaviness. But we're not partaking of that. We're partaking of this. Amen. Jesus is the antidote to anything going on in this world. Whatever has been going on in your family, this is the antidote. Amen. This is our medicine. So, Father, we thank you that you did send Jesus. And, Jesus, we thank you that as a good son, you fulfilled the Father's plan to set the captives free. And so we thank you that your body hung on that tree and died for us. And you said, do this in remembrance, that my body was broken for you so that you could be whole. We receive that. We receive the benefit of freedom from all punishment for sin right now. I declare over your mind that you have a sound mind in Jesus' name. That upon taking this bread, you receive virtue into your mind. Receive virtue into your emotions. You're receiving virtue into your body. You receive virtue of Jesus into your thoughts right now in Jesus name on I bind the spirit of depression confusion and heaviness we forbid your activities in these people and those listening to the sound of my voice I cast you out in Jesus name we we declare you be far from us 
in Jesus' name. We are the redeemed of the Lord by what Jesus has done. And so we thank you, Lord, that these, are, these people are the untouchables because of what Jesus has done. Now we receive wholeness, wholeness in Jesus' name. Say that I receive wholeness right now in Jesus' name. Go ahead and take the bread. Thank you, Lord, for wholeness. Thank you, Lord, for light coming upon our thoughts. Thank you, Lord, for heaviness being removed and a lightness coming right now. Thank you, Lord, the anointing is breaking the yoke and heavy chains. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Freedom in this place. All bondage is broken. Hallelujah. All imbalances in, in hormones and and, 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 and brain activity. It's all healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And then Jesus raised the cup of wine and he said, this is my blood. And I've written a New Testament with this blood. And this New Testament means that we are now the heirs of everything that God's family has. Amen. And we've become his children. You may have come... Uh, into this world by, by physical parents, natural parents, but now you're born of the Spirit and born into the family of God. And you may not have a natural inheritance, but that, that doesn't mean you're not getting an inheritance. God says, by the blood of Jesus, you get everything. Come on. Every good promise, everything that he possesses is now yours. So Lord, we receive freedom by the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that your blood causes us to pass from darkness into your marvelous light. Once we were not your children, but now we become your children. By the blood of Jesus, we are born again. So we partake of this newness of life by the blood of Jesus. There's life in the blood. God's life is in the blood. So we thank you for that now in Jesus' name. Go ahead. I declare that you are righteous, you are cleansed, you are holy, you're forgiven. Praise the Lord. Isn't that good? You're a child of the King. And we do not participate in the things that are going on in the world. Amen. We don't have to participate in those things. We participate in the things that God has given us. You agree with that? Amen.